Well, good morning, everybody. And it's lovely to be able to share with you again this morning. Um, as you can see, I'm in my log cabin at the top of Havelock House and the wind is howling around me. But uh, God is good, isn't he? And um, as Rob has already said, we're going to be looking at over the next few weeks at hope. And um, so we're going to have the hope factor this morning. It's a strange word, isn't it? Hope. It, it, it's um, one that sometimes conjures up in me that it, it can be for us a bit wishy-washy if we're not careful. But um, we're going to look a bit more deeper into that this morning. Well, as Cindy already talk, mentioned to us about Valentine's Day, maybe you've had some flowers or chocolates or a card. But I'm afraid there's no romantic meals out this evening for anybody. So you might perhaps have a takeaway or somebody might appear with a nice meal for you. Or perhaps you'll hope you'll have one cooked for you. That would be a big hope, wouldn't it? <laughs> but anyway, we're going to be looking at hope. So what is hope? Well, the dictionary says hope is a feeling of expectation and a desire for a particular thing to happen. A feeling of trust, a desire for things to change for the better and to want that situation very much. And I think that's what we definitely need at the moment. So our reading this morning comes from Hebrews and it's chapter 10 and verses 19 to 25. So if you want to find it, that's Hebrews chapter 10 and verses 19 to 25. Therefore, brothers and sisters, since we have confidence to enter the most holy place by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way opened for us through the curtain, that is, his body, and since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us draw near to God with a sincere heart and with full assurance that faith brings. Having our hearts sprinkled to cleanse us from a guilty conscience and having our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess, for he who promised is faithful. And let us consider how we may spur one another on towards love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together, as some are in the habit of doing but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day approaching. And one of the reasons we looked at um, when we had our um, preachers meeting was one of the things I wanted to do was to try and encourage. And we looked at this, this series of hope, you know, we've, we've not met together in the church for a long time and and for those who can't do zoom it's been difficult that they haven't been able to share together but we just want to really encourage you this morning of the hope that we have so what are you hoping for at the moment i'm sure we could all come up with a long list of things that they were hoping for well some will happen and some won't we definitely want our situation to get better soon, back to some kind of normality. But perhaps we don't want things to get back to how they used to be. Perhaps through all this, certain things may have changed and changed for the better. Well, this year, I hope to go and see the sea because I didn't get to the coast at all last year. And I've really missed seeing the sea air. And it's strange, isn't it, that you take things for granted, but just to perhaps stand on the front at Barmouth or Aberystwyth and smell that ocean, I really missed that and didn't get the chance to go last year. So that's one of the things. Or really just to go anywhere would be nice, wouldn't it? You know, get out in the car and go for a ride somewhere. Or perhaps it's to see family and friends and just to be able to give them a big hug. We've missed hugs, haven't we? <laughs> 
We want to get back to church and have fellowship together. To be able to stand on the door and welcome people in, not at two metres distance and with a mask on, but be able to just shake their hand or give them a hug. We want to be able to sit next to each other, sing and worship together. Zoom has been great and it's been a great way to keep in touch. But as I said before, but wouldn't it be great to see everyone and especially those who can't access Zoom? For me to get back to work. Strange, all the times I've worked for all these years full time, I've been desperate to have time at home <laughs> and it's been lovely. But I've actually missed seeing the customers in the shop and talking to them and I missed seeing my work colleagues. And one of the things I hope is that the effects of this past year won't be too much for work. Some of us are hoping to get the vaccine and some of us have had it. And for that, we are thankful. But I'm sure, like I said, we've all had a long list, but we can all look forward to being together soon. But what about when we think about hope in God? Is that how we see it in those situations? Do we expect things to happen or are we not sure? As we started 2021, we had a lot of expectations because we thought, well, it can't be the same as 2020. It's got to be different. But as we started 21, it felt a bit like a boat going out from the harbour into uncharted waters. We didn't know what's going to happen. But, you know, as Christ's followers, we know that God is with us and he will guide us and he has the power to calm any waves in the storms that we might face. And in times like this, we need to encourage each other. You know, we have a sure and certain hope in Christ. Hope in the NIV translation of the Bible is mentioned over 167 times. It's quite a lot, isn't it? It's an important word. And the word in Hebrew actually means to expect or have some sort of expectation. This means we aren't merely hoping for something to be completed. We're 100 percent expecting it to be completed. We should have no doubt in our mind concerning God's promises to us. God never fails, does he? And we, as I said before, we can tend to be a bit light hearted with the word hope. We say things like, I oh, hope it won't rain or I hope that food tastes good or I hope the children will behave themselves. But, you know, when we talk about hope in God, it's much deeper than that. I was looking up on one of the Billy Graham pages and, and looking up on the theme of hope. And he used these headings, which I thought were quite helpful. Hope is never lost. We can be confident in hope. True hope comes from God. Hope is a gift and hope endures. It lasts. You know, God has a plan for each and every one of us who look to him. He has a future for us that is full of hope. I know I tend to use this verse a lot if I'm speaking, but it's just such a powerful verse. And looking at John 3.16, it's just a verse of hope, isn't it? For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. God's love, the greatest love. You know, we've mentioned it being Valentine's Day. Some people like it, some people don't. You know, you might meet someone and fall head over heels for them. 
and you hope that they will feel the same as you and that it will last. But you see, God's love, God's love is different. If we give our lives to him, our hope is certain. He loves us and we can be confident in that. For God so loved the world. God's love gives us hope. And then God's gift, God's gift in Christ. He gives us new life, abundant life. God gave us the best gift ever. It will last longer than your chocolates and your flowers. He gave us his one and only son, a gift, God's gift of hope. And God's grace, Brenda mentioned grace before. Well, in 2 Corinthians 12, verse 9, it says, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. That whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. And as we've known, grace, God's riches, at Christ's expense, hope, grace. We have hope because of God's grace. And because of all this, we have a hope that is steadfast and sure. You know, we all need love and hope. In 1 Peter chapter 1 and verses 3 to 4, it says, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil or fade. This inheritance is kept in heaven for you. And Romans 10, 9 says, if you declare with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. God's hope is not a mere desire for something to happen. It is a confident expectation and a desire for something good in the future. When we read about hope in God, it doesn't mean cross your fingers and you hope that it'll happen. That tends to be the world's view. It's a bit like saying, I hope I'll win the lottery. God's hope is different. In the words of William Carey, he said, expect great things from God. So how do we, or how do you, view hope? What do you think? When you say my hope is in God, do you trust his promises? Is it a cross your fingers hope or a hope that is solid and strong? Many things in life will make us swerve. Yet we can hold on unswervingly to our hope in Jesus. Not because we are steady, but because he is. For he who promised is faithful. Amid all this uncertainty of the time we are in, we have a hope that is steadfast and sure. So, where is your hope today? Have you put your hope, trust and love in God do you believe he died for you and can forgive your sins? And if we have, it makes our job more important than ever, doesn't it, at the moment? You know, people need hope. They need something to hold on to. You know, we need to share our faith with whoever, whether it's the workmen that come into the house or maybe the carers that come to look after us people we might be able to have a distant conversation with on the street or maybe it's somebody we need to phone 
or talk to. You know, we need to share that hope that we have. And if you don't know Christ today, you know, it's never too late to accept that hope. I'm just going to read you an extract of a man that never gave up his hope and his testimony and sharing his faith. Some of you may have known him, not known him personally, but known of him. And I expect Peter might have heard of him because he was a Scottish Baptist pastor. His name was John Harper, and he was going out to America to preach at the Moody Church in Chicago. He was on board that very famous ship, the Titanic. He was a widower, and he was traveling with his daughter and his sister. And as we know, when the Titanic hit that deadly iceberg in the Atlantic, that fateful night of 14th of April, 1912, Harper cried out for women and children to be um, saved and put onto the lifeboats. His own sister and his daughter were on the lifeboats. <clears throat> but he gave away his own life jacket, knowing that such an act meant certain death for him along with the 1,500 other passengers. In this account of his last heroic act, John Harper didn't give up giving his, his testimony. During those final 50 minutes, a man who was clinging to a board drifted near John Harper. And Harper, who was struggling in the water, cried, are you saved? The answer returned, no. And Harper shouted words from the Bible, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shall be saved. Before responding, the man drifted into darkness. Later, the current brought them back together and back in sight of each other. And once again, Harper shouted the question, are you saved? And once again, he received the answer, no. And Harper repeated the words of Acts 16, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shall be saved. Then the drowning Harper slipped away into his watery grave. The man he sought to win did indeed put his faith in Jesus Christ. He was later rescued by the Carpathia lifeboats and he went on in Hamilton, Ontario, to testify of his faith. His name was George Henry Cavell, and he became a minister. And he was John Harper's last convert. Never give up, folks. Keep sharing your faith and leave the rest to God. It's never too late to put your trust in him. Then, we can say with confidence, my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly trust on Jesus' name. On Christ, the solid rock, I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. Put your hope in the Lord. He won't let you down and he will carry you through whatever storms you may face and bring you to life everlasting. Amen. Father, we thank you for our time together this morning. Lord, Help us to remember that hope in you is steadfast and certain and strong and that you will hold us through whatever we may face. I pray that you'll be with us. Give us the strength that we need and the courage to share our faith with others so that we may encourage and be there to support whoever that you bring in our path, Lord. Amen.